Now in this video, I wanna just go over a couple of different Prometheus use cases for why we would wanna use it and why it was ultimately created. So let's say that we've got a couple of different data centers scattered across the country. And we also have some services running on AWS or some cloud provider. You know, ideally we wanna be able to get some insights uh, into all of these data centers as well as the cloud and collect metrics from all of these different locations and then have them all presented on one clean dashboard. Well, this is something that we can do with Prometheus. We could set up Prometheus to collect metrics from multiple data centers, and Prometheus has built-in dashboarding utilities that it can use to present all of that data in a single page. Now, let's say that there have been several outages that have occurred due to high memory on the server that's hosting our MySQL database. And our operations team would like to be notified through email when the memory gets to 80% max capacity so that they can take a proactive measure and resolve the issue before it actually impacts end users. And this is all things that we can do with Prometheus. Prometheus has built-in alerting so that it can track various metrics. And when those metrics cross a specific threshold, they can generate alerts um, and send those alerts through various different notifiers. That includes email, that includes things like Slack integration, SMS, and a few others. For the third and final use case, uh, a new video upload feature has been added to our website. However, there's some concerns about users uploading videos that might be too large. And the team would like to find out at which video length does the application start to degrade. And they have figured that the way to do this is they want to be able to chart the average file size of uploads and the average latency per request. And they can use those two to cross-reference and find out where is the exact file size point where the latency starts to get a little too high. And these are all things that we can do with Prometheus. We can set Prometheus to scrape and collect the average file size as well as the average latency. And what we can do then is then collect that data and plot it using the built-in dashboarding and visualization tools within Prometheus. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of Prometheus. So what is Prometheus? Well, Prometheus is an open source monitoring tool that collects metrics data and provides tools to visualize that collected data. In addition to that, Prometheus has built-in alerting functionality so that we can put in rules that say that when certain metrics cross a specific threshold, we can generate an alert and notify our team. And the way that Prometheus collects these metrics is by scraping targets who expose metrics through an HTTP endpoint. So what that means is uh, the application or the system that we wanna collect metrics from will host those metrics on a specific HTTP endpoint and all we have to do is just send a get request to retrieve those metrics. And scraped metrics are then stored in a time series database which can be queried using Prometheus's built-in query language PromQL. So what kind of metrics can Prometheus monitor? Well, we can monitor things like CPU, memory utilization, disk space, service uptime, and we can also monitor application-specific metrics as well. So things like what were the number of exceptions in our application? What's the latency? What's the total number of pending requests? So there's a lot of different flexibility in the things that we can uh, monitor and the things that, and the types of metrics that we can collect. Uh, Prometheus has been set up to be able to collect metrics from a variety of different sources, not just operating systems, not just applications. We also have networking devices, databases. There's a lot of integration with a lot of different platforms, softwares, and tools that we commonly use. So let's talk about what Prometheus is used to track. Prometheus is designed to exclusively monitor time series data that's numeric, and that's the important thing to understand. It monitors numeric data. And so if you wanted to monitor things like events or system logs or traces, these are all things that Prometheus is not designed for. It's meant exclusively for numeric data. Uh, now, just a bit of background behind Prometheus. Uh, it was originally sponsored by SoundCloud, but in 2016, it joined the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, it's primarily written in Golang. And um, if you want to read up more on Prometheus, you can see the docs at prometheus.io slash docs. In this section, we're going to learn about Prometheus's architecture. Now, within the main Prometheus component, there's three parts to it. And the first one is going to be the data retrieval worker. So this worker is responsible for collecting the metrics from the targets. So it's going to send the HTTP requests out to your specific targets and collect the metrics. And once it's collected the metrics, it's going to store it 
within a time series database. So this database is just where we store all the metrics. And the final part to the Prometheus server is going to be a HTTP server. So this HTTP server is just there to allow us to retrieve the data that we stored in the database because we're eventually going to want to actually take a look at the metrics and visualize it. And we do that through the HTTP server. So we could say in a HTTP request to the HTTP server, and we're going to provide a query using its built-in query language called PromQL. And so that's the main architecture within the Prometheus server component. So we covered the three components that make up the Prometheus server. However, it's a little bit more complicated than that because Prometheus has a lot of different components that make up the entire solution. So in this section, we're going to focus on how all of the pieces fit together. So we covered the main Prometheus server and the three uh, parts that make up it. Now, the other thing that we have to learn about is exporters. Uh, and so exporters are just little mini processes that run on your targets that are responsible for serving up the metrics so that the retrieval node is able to actually pull the metrics because by default, your application, uh, your servers, your systems, they don't automatically present the metrics in a easily consumable format for Prometheus. So these exporters are responsible for taking internal data and converting it into a metric that Prometheus will understand. And the way that Prometheus actually does this is by using a pull method. So Prometheus queries the data. Uh, it's never the target sending us the data. However, there's going to be times where you have short-lived jobs that are not going to be able to work with the pull-based model of Prometheus. And that's where we have this component called push gateway. And so anytime you have a short-lived job where we need to be able to push data to Prometheus because the job doesn't last long enough for us to be able to scrape it, you're going to use the short-lived job to send the data to a push gateway and then Prometheus can then query the data from the gateway like any other target. And in addition to that, uh, Prometheus expects you to hard code all of the targets that it needs to scrape. It needs to be able to know about all the targets. Now you can configure this within the configuration file. However, there, for environments where um, it's very dynamic, so things like Kubernetes or your cloud provider where you have EC2 instances spinning up and down, uh, you're going to want to be able to dynamically update the list of targets that you want to scrape. And that's where service discovery comes into play. So service discovery is all about uh, providing a list of targets for Prometheus to escape the, so that you don't have to hard code those values. And like I mentioned, Prometheus can also be used to generate alerts. So you configure the alerts within Prometheus. However, Prometheus doesn't actually send the notification. So it, it's not responsible for sending emails. It's not responsible for sending SMS. Prometheus is exclusively used for just triggering an alert. However, we need a separate entity called Alert Manager, which handles all of the SMS, the email, the SMTP uh, integration so that it can actually send the notification to the end user. So when an alert gets triggered, Prometheus is going to push the alert to a process called Alert Manager. And Alert Manager will then be responsible for sending it uh, either through email or through Slack or whatever integration that you choose. And then finally, we want to be able to obviously collect and see the data from our Prometheus server. And so whether we're using the Prometheus Web UI or we're using a tool like Grafana, uh, we will be using a language called PromQL to actually query the data through the HTTP server that lives within the Prometheus component. Now, as I mentioned, Prometheus collects metrics by sending HTTP requests to the slash metrics endpoint of each target that it wants to scrape. However, if you want to customize the specific endpoint, instead of sending it to slash metrics, maybe you have a different URL, you can customize that within the Prometheus configuration. Now, most systems by default don't collect metrics and expose them on an HTTP endpoint to be consumed by a Prometheus server. And so what we need to do is we'd have to install a specific process called an exporter. And so what an exporter is supposed to do is an exporter collects metrics from a specific service or application or system. It takes the metric, converts it into a format that Prometheus expects, and then exposes a slash metrics endpoint so that Prometheus is able to scrape that data. Now, Prometheus has several native exporters. So um, we have the node exporter, which is for collecting metrics for a Linux server. There's one for Windows, uh, for MySQL, Apache, HAProxy. So a lot of the common systems uh, and um, 
applications and tools that we use, a lot of them already have exporters so that you don't have to do a lot of work to be able to collect metrics on those specific systems. And if you take a look at the documentation, you'll actually be able to see all of the different exporters that Prometheus supports. So in the last slide, we talked about how we can collect metrics on various systems using Prometheus's native exporters. But what if we wanted to track metrics for our own custom application? So things like what were the total number of errors or exceptions that we saw? What was the latency of a request? What was a specific job execution time? Well, Prometheus comes with client libraries that allow you to expose any application metrics you need Prometheus to track. And they support several different languages. There's uh, Go support, Java, Python, Ruby, Rust. And there's also third-party support uh, that other people have made their own client libraries for various different languages. So Prometheus follows a pull-based model. And that means that Prometheus has to send a request to a target to then pull the data. And that means that Prometheus needs to have a list of all the targets it should scrape. So it's aware of all of the different targets it should track, essentially. And just to give you an idea of some of the other monitoring tools or solutions that use a pull-based model, those include Zabbix and Nagios. When it comes to a push-based model, uh, you'll see that targets are actually configured to automatically stream or send metrics data to the metric server. So the uh, metric server or the or Prometheus server has no idea about the targets. The targets will just blindly send traffic to a pre-configured IP, which is going to be the IP of the metric server. And some of the push-based systems that exist out there are things like Logstash, Graphite, and OpenTSDB. Now, some of the benefits of using a pull-based system is that it's easier to tell if a target is actually down because in a push-based system, we don't know if it's down or it's been decommissioned. Uh, as well as with push-based systems, since devices, when they come online, they'll just start sending traffic to the uh, metric server. It could potentially overload the metric server if too many incoming connections get flooded at the same time. And more importantly, with a pull-based system, we have a definitive list of targets to monitor, creating a central source of truth for us. Now, why would you want to use a push-based model? Uh, well, that's for things like event-based systems, where pulling data wouldn't exactly be a viable option. Um, however, Prometheus, remember, isn't meant for collecting events. Uh, it's used exclusively for collecting numeric metrics. So this isn't necessarily a negative for using a pull-based model because Prometheus isn't designed for event-based systems. Um, short-lived jobs are also an issue because if you're using a pull model um, and the short-lived job doesn't last long enough for the next pull or scrape, then you'll miss out on it. But um, this can be fixed by, with a feature called uh, Prometheus's push gateway, which can handle this situation.